So today I come to you with some bad news, sad news, but we're going to turn it around and make it a learning opportunity. Hey all, Rome Town Girl here, coming to you from the cab of my RV. <laughs> so in my last video, I had told you that the caravan had partially started. And now I'm going to tell you that the caravan is officially over. <laughs> it did not last very long, but I did walk away with some fantastic information that we can all learn from. So I'm going to share that with you today. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you have a good time with me today and you'll want to come back over and over and over again. And to my longtime watchers, thank you so much for always being there to support me and my channel. You know how much I love and appreciate every single one of you. So first I'm going to tell you the story of what happened, and then I'm going to tell you my top tips for if you're thinking about caravanning with some people. So I started out meeting up with my one friend, Alicia, and we were going to make our way up to Salt Lake City area and hunk up with her friend who, for purposes of this video, we'll call her Sarah. Not a real name. I'm protecting the not so innocent. So the first thing I want to tell you is that it was absolute dumb luck that Alicia and I caravan together so well. It left both of us not even realizing that we should have asked a lot of questions of each other. But as, as it turned out, we just were really copacetic. And I'm so grateful for having that experience. So I knew what caravanning could be like versus what it was like once we joined up with Sarah. I didn't really know Sarah, but she was a good friend of Alicia's. And so birds of a feather and all. I figured we would hopefully all get along. So the first sort of yellow flag was Sarah was very emphatic that we get to um, meeting her in Salt Lake by a specific day. I really didn't think much of it. I just figured we're all really excited to start our travels up to Wyoming. Well, once we met up with Sarah, it became very clear to me that she was uh, kind of bossy, kind of inflexible, and it was going to kind of be uh, her way or the highway. And I just figured that it sort of rubbed me the wrong way because I'm like that, right? So I was doing my best to just sort of hold my tongue and go with the flow and be way more accommodating and flexible than I usually am. Because I got to be with a group. It's not just me. I think that might just be one of the pitfalls when you travel solo, I don't know, my dogs pretty much do whatever I say we're going to do, and they don't really care. But I knew going into this that this would be a situation of three people, and we had to compromise, and we had to work together. And so I did, I did go into the situation with the mindset of understanding that I was going to have to be way more flexible and accommodating than I generally like to be. I mean, I am capable of doing that. It just takes a little effort. She said she drove slow, which Alicia and I, we do drive slow. Guess what? I don't know what her idea of slow is, but she does not drive slow. So that caused some stress. She also seemed to be very irritated that I liked to stop every hour or so to get out, walk around, let the dogs go to the bathroom. I mainly do that because I have some form of, I don't know, you know that thing where if you sit too long and your ankles can swell up? <laughs> I kind of have that. And I've had it for years. So I find that when I do long driving days, if I just stop every hour, you know, I usually try to find like a Walmart or a Family Dollar or some kind of errand or maybe some place to sightsee. It just gets me out. I walk and it hasn't been a problem. Well, Miss Sarah seemed to be completely annoyed that Alicia and I would like to stop every hour, but whatever. Then she had taken the lead as far as driving and planning and finding places for us to boondock, and she had a very tiny RV. 
And so she was able to get in and navigate much trickier roads, smaller roads, and she didn't seem to realize that both Alicia and I were much larger. And it got to the point where she would, we would wind up somewhere and want to like, you know, go into a spot and I would just sit out on the main road and just wait because I wasn't going to risk taking my gigantic RV into these crazy little unknown roads. And who knows, would I be able to turn around? Would I get stuck in a ditch? It was crazy. But then for me, the breaking point was that um, I wanted to go uh, stop at some sites along the way on one of our travel days. And that just did not fit with what Sarah had planned. And it was so funny because for like 48 hours, I was so pissed. I was like, why am I doing this? And and I'm one third of this and I want to go see this place. And I don't know why it took me like 48 hours before I realized, wait a minute. I don't have to stay with them. I'm a big girl. I travel by myself all the time. Once I remembered that, I just politely let them know I was going to be going on my own and I separated from them and off I went and things were fabulous after that. We'll pick up with that in my next video when I show you as I make my way to Jackson and the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone and all that good stuff. So my friendship with Alicia remains intact. Thank God. We will absolutely caravan again together because we just, we did it so well. I will never be caravanning anywhere around this Sarah person ever again. And going forward, if I have another opportunity to caravan with a group of people, now I'll know what questions to ask. So now let me share with you some of my very hard earned caravanning tips so you can learn from my naivete. What size rigs does everybody have? Because I learned that a little 19 foot classy motorhome can go fast up hills, can ride the brakes down hills, and can maneuver into the tiniest and craziest of roads when you're boondocking and not get stuck and be able to turn around. When you're in a 30 foot two classy, it doesn't work like that. And God bless Alicia, she would just follow her in with her truck and her fifth wheel. And for some reason, pretty much managed to never get too terribly stuck. So the next one is, is how fast does everybody drive? And I'm gonna tell you right now that in my short experience here, everybody says slow, but it's not true. So I tend to drive no faster than 60 miles an hour, sometimes 65, but I generally stay under the speed limit and in the slow lane. It just makes me feel more comfortable. As I found out that when you have a fifth wheel with a truck or you are driving a much smaller um, class CRV, or if you were driving a van, you certainly can take hills at like 60 miles an hour. And when you come down them, you can ride the brakes just like you would in a normal car. I can't pull a hill at 60 miles an hour. I'm lucky if I can like hold 40. And then of course, coming down a hill, I have to put it in a low gear. I'm generally going maybe 30 miles an hour. Whereas if I were in a lighter, smaller vehicle, you can ride the brakes and you know, it's just like being in a car. Another thing to consider is what kind of roads does everybody like to travel? So I tend to like driving on the highway, on the freeways. I don't know. It just seems easier. I always know I'm going through places that are going to have gas stations and, 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 you know, Walmarts. And I just feel better when I'm, you know, trying to go a farther distance in a single day. That works great. But some people aren't comfortable on driving on highways and freeways, and they're going to want to drive on the side roads, which can be beautiful, as you see from some of my footage here, but at the same time, they can take you longer, they can take you out of the way, and they can take you into some precarious driving situations as far as, you know, steep inclines or steep declines. Another question to get clarity on is how long or far does everybody like to drive in a day? So 
I go by hours. I like to drive about two hours a day. I can push it all the way up to four, but really two is ideal, three is fine, and four is my upper limit. Like my friend Alicia, it's interesting, she goes by miles, so she likes to drive about 120 to 150 miles a day and doesn't, uh, doesn't assign a timeline to it because you never know you know your speed's gonna impact it and traffic's gonna impact it and time of day all those things so be sure that you're all kind of on the same page with that and find out who travels based on time and who travels based on mileage and along with that goes how frequently you stop um, I understand from my experience with Sarah, she could just drive all the way straight through. At least that's what she led me to believe. Whereas Alicia and I are really fine looking for a place to stop every hour to hour and a half. And sometimes that was a rest stop. Sometimes it was a gas station. You know, whatever came up along the road. Although between you and me, I will actually research that stuff. I want to know where are the rest stops. I want to know where are the gas stations. And I sort of aim for them and time them accordingly. Then there's always finding spots. Are you going to be going to RV parks, to campgrounds? Are you going to exclusively be boondocking, doing truck stops? Work all that stuff out and what each person is comfortable with. I know for myself that, you know, I'll do all of them, except for truck stops. I can't stand truck stops. Sorry, truckers. But they I can't sleep. It's just so noisy. And a lot of times they run their engines all night long. And so I'll do anything but a truck stop. In fact, this time I popped by Walmart Cherry. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> and I, I started staying in some Walmart parking lots, which I'd never done before. So thank you, Miss Alicia. She exposed me to something new. And for instance, Alicia and Sarah, they don't like to spend money camping anywhere if they can at all avoid it. So they were strictly, you know, dispersed camping girls. And if you are boondocking and dispersed camping, I would highly recommend that the people with the largest rigs do the scouting. Because as I found out, when I look for spots, I am constantly searching areas that can accommodate big rigs, that have easy access, that does not require four-wheel drive. I will be doing a video on how I go about finding the spots that I find. This caravan experience really brought to the forefront that I do a lot of research because the last thing I want to do is show up somewhere and have a difficult time navigating in or finding a place to be when you've got a 32 foot class C. People with smaller rigs, vans, cars, tents, that's not as important to them because they can generally find places in, out, easy, and no problemo. And that did present a problem with this particular caravan, putting the person with the smallest vehicle in charge of finding spots. But it worked out fine because Sarah would take us to her spots. I'd wait quietly and go, there's no way in heck I'm going down that road. Ultimately, it wouldn't work. And then I could present my option and my options seemed to work well because of course, I had found big open spaces where bigger rigs could comfortably access and park. Another thing to explore with your potential caravan mates would be what needs do they have when you are looking for sites? In other words, for Alicia and I, we need internet and cell service because we both have YouTube channels and we like to stream and watch a lot of movies. <laughs> so... That was important to us. And for somebody who doesn't have a fully self-contained vehicle, like someone in a van or someone car camping, they might find it really important to have um, a bathroom facility where they're going. And so I think my last one would be sightseeing along the way. I tend to like to find places to stop along the way versus just trying to get from point A to point B. And that's one that came up real big for me 
because there was, you know, a big disagreement about stopping at specifically Jackson Hole along the way. Um, I'd never been there. I wanted to see it. I wanted to go to the Antler Arch and whatever else Jackson Hole had to offer. Whereas Sarah was like, eh, nothing's there. It's not worth it. And so right then and there, there was no accommodation for what I wanted to do. And it was either break away from the caravan to do what I wanted or go along with them and miss out on things that were important to me. And that wasn't gonna fly. We just got flagged to slow down because we got cows. We got a cow crossing. Ooh, it's cowboys, look. And a cow dog. How cool is that? Those are some real life cowboys. And I think there was actually a girl, so, and a cowgirl too. And that also reminds me that some people don't like to drive together and are just happy to say, meet ya at this destination. And then you're free to go off and, you know, do whatever you wanna do. I wasn't as comfortable with that because we were going to unknown boondocking sites and I thought, I don't wanna try to find these on my own. And if I'm caravanning, I enjoy doing the drive with my other caravanese. You know, oh, look at this, and oh, can we stop there, and let's get some strawberries, or there's some homemade fudge, or I don't know, whatever comes up. I find that part of what makes it fun. I don't need to go travel by myself just to meet up with a bunch of people at the end of the day. And I think that leads me to my final point that you'd want to work out with people that you might caravan with. And that is, how long do you intend to stay at any given spot? Is, is this, are you on a mission to go somewhere? So you're trying to like only spend a night or two in each place? Or are you just leisurely going from here to there, allowing the weather and whatever time frames each site has dictate? Like for instance, I found with this particular caravan group, we were driving every single day and it just got to be way too much for me and I actually had to put my foot down at the last place we were and said I need to stay here for at least three days I just cannot continue with this pace of drive 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 all day find a place spend the night get up the next day and drive some more so knowing that will clearly make your time together more pleasant. I hope I haven't scared you off from the concept of caravanning with other people. And I hope I've given you some good questions to ponder and ask so that your experience will go way smoother than mine did. Have you caravanned with people yet? Let me know what kernels of wisdom you have in the comments below. Well, I hope you had a good time hanging out with me. And if you'd like to do it again, it's really easy. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and also that little bell notification. And that way you should get notified, emphasis on the word should, <laughs> get notified the next time I post another video. Oh, and always feel free to share this video with anyone you think might benefit from the information as well. Okay, I got some video editing to do. See you next time.